Yo, YouTube, what is up? Radar25, back again with my co-host, my brother, Michael, Club Guy Mike, uh, oh, Mania, no. <laughs> whatever you guys want to call him. Uh, we're back again with another video. It's going to be our three takeaways from AEW Dynamite from April Fools. Wait, 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 wait. What up, Marks? All right. There you go. He says what's up to you guys. Uh, another entertaining show from AEW, um, full with wrestling from top to bottom. Uh, funny stuff going on. So it's three takeaways today. Uh, before we get in the video, I want to remind you guys, drop a like on this video and previous videos. Um, and hit that subscribe notification bell so you guys aren't missing one thing. If you guys are watching and are subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit that subscriber count up. Um, and I appreciate you guys showing up to watch it, the video. And, you know, follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, links in the description below as per usual. So without further ado, guys, let's get into this video. Three takeaways from AEW Dynamite. Do it. All right, guys. So the show started off with uh, Tony Schiavone standing on the side of the ring with Cody Rhodes. Terrible shoes. <laughs> terrible shoes, shoes over ter here. Terrible dressed Tony Schiavone as per usual, uh, <laughs> along with uh, Cody Rhodes and his and his dog. Um, very nice white dog that he has. What's uh, his dog's so name again? Um, he's he's over his like Rover. That dog. Uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yes, yeah, his name. Pharaoh. Yeah, Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's his name. Uh, so a cool little thing to have his dog there it was funny. They were in a different location. It was undisclosed. Uh, location looked like a warehouse. Definitely like a warehouse, like a Top Golf. There was like a fake, <laughs> fake uh, grass there. I don't know what the hell. Yeah, was going it was on. weird. The little fake grass that they yeah, had. It, it could have like been like it, it could have been like a maybe like a training spot. Yeah, where, you know, like it could have been like turf for like sprints and stuff like that. It's the um, old uh, WCW powerhouse or whatever they the call it. Power that. plant. Yeah, the power plant. That's, power that's plant. what it was. That's it had, a big, it was. had a big pole that yep. came into play a few times. It was uh, the power plant. Later, yeah. Um, but overall, good um, episode of uh, um, AW Dynamite. Uh, first match of the night was Kenny Omega versus Trent of the Best Friends. Obviously, you know, he came out with Chuck Taylor and freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. Now, um, not, you know, it was a really good match, a really good match overall. Uh, but the only part that was kind of weird about it was the fact that, you know, they have no animosity towards each other, but they kind of played it like they did. Yeah. They had like a real like issue and beef between them. Well, I mean, and, they were both in Japan once. Maybe they just had a beef back then or it's like they're trying to play off of that. Well, I mean, that's what they said, but it's like, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Cody saying that, that, they, that they've had a match in Japan at one time. It's like, it's really not enough to make it seem like they had like a, because they the way they played it was like if they had an actual beef with each other. So it didn't really make a lot of sense. But other than that, a very good match. The pole came into play in this match where he kind of gave him the, cool. Kenny gave Trent the buckle bomb, but against the pole. pole, which was, which was, was cool. It looked good. And it was a random pole in the middle of this warehouse. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, the, the match was like 25, 30 minutes. Basically it was a, yeah. it, was, it was a long it, match. It, it, would, match. it almost went to the time. I think it had like one minute left and, yeah, and Kenny was, hit the one wing angel, which is an automatic win. If he hits that, it's a pin basically it's every done. single time. Omega wins. Um, and you know, it was just a good match to have, uh, between two guys, but there's no story behind it. It's just guys having matches I mean, because they have no, yeah. they have no other choice. Again, it's just, there was probably like everybody that you saw there. That's all they had. Like it was yeah, 15 they, guys, maybe that, that, that yeah. they, at this point, yeah. just they, is what it is. Well, they brought people back on the side of the, uh, on the side of yeah. the ring, like in the stands, basically like standing there. So they had the gun club, Lily gun. And I believe that's his son. Um, yeah, they some. had obviously the best friends there chilling on the side. Uh, Baker Kip, was there. Britt Baker, Kip Sabian, uh, J Jimmy Havoc was there. Yep. Um, so a couple of people out there just to make it more interesting, more fun. And, um, it, and it definitely adds more to, to, to the whole thing, especially it was, it was weird in that warehouse, but it was still cool. And just having someone, uh, the wrestlers there just to yeah. liven up. It was, it was still good. I mean, yeah. Do so, what they can. At the point. So a really good match to start the show. Long match. Omega gets the win. Um, next match on the show was uh, Hakira Shida, who's the number one contender for the women's title, number one contender in the number number one contender in the women's division. Uh, so she will face Nala Rose sometime in the near future. Uh, she was taking on a local competitor, Anna J, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. With two uh, Y's in her name. Yeah. So she trained. Um, I believe she trained under uh, QT Marshall. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and, what, and whatever school he has, I think it's the, the Nightmare Factory or something like that they call it. Okay. Uh, with where he, they train. Um, Did not know that. Did not know that. Yeah. So you know, Sheeta pretty dom pretty much dominated. The match. I thought it was gonna be kind of a squash, but it wasn't. You know, too much of a squash. Yeah. Uh, but they, they let it. You know, Anna J get some stuff in, which I'm not too sure about. I think she just had Sheeta squasher because she is gonna go up against Nala Rose and yeah. letting somebody 
making their debut with no hype or yeah. nothing behind and her. She, and, and she and she and she was green like her her in the ring. She was a little bit like timing was kind of off on some of the stuff. I mean, it's probably the first time it was probably put together and stuff. But there was just yeah. some little awkward. I mean. I'm not saying she never has a future or anything, but just, she she was green. Yeah, but I'm saying like you know you bring somebody in who has no vignettes, you don't know who they are, just yeah. you don't get an entrance, nothing. They get announced really quickly, and you let them get stuff in. Uh, you know, it's more like uh, you know they probably should just had her squash her, but yeah. you know they let her get a couple, a little bit of offense in. Uh, Sheeta obviously wins the match, has a little you know back and forth with Britt Baker who's in the crowd eating a sandwich, and mm, uh, throws a chocolate at her. Yeah, and that was that, that was that. Um, so you know. It was what it was. Just continue to build her as she eventually is going to face uh, Nyla Rose. Yeah. Now, next thing on the show, which is takeaway number one of the night, and that is the John Moxley, Jake Hager promo package, video package that they made, which in the end announcing that in two weeks, it's going to be Jake Hager versus John Moxley, empty arena, no holds barred match for the AEW World Championship. Where, where, where is that happening? I thought that was like, is that happening somewhere else? Hmm. Hmm. Is there a match like that somewhere coming up? Hmm. <laughs> The arena no holds barred. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, hmm. But um, so they're doing that match. And, uh, you know, the, the promo package was really, really good. Um, it's, it's a lot of Moxley playing up um, Jake Hager as like a, a monster and stuff like that. And they showed a lot of Bellator footage of Jake Hager. Yeah, I'm joking but, out the same guy twice. Yeah. But the thing is, they, they had Jake Hager speak a lot which I'm not sure if that was the best thing to do. And was he, like, in a bathroom or something? He looked like he was in a bathroom, yeah. Like, what? That's, that's where you choose to do <laughs> in the, yeah, in it, the shitter? It did, look, it did look like he was in some type of, like, really fancy bathroom. Like, yeah, it was a beautiful bathroom, but, like, I don't know, in maybe a bar next time or somewhere yeah, just a little bit better in your house? I'm not too sure about that part. But I mean, like, great bathroom, but. Yeah, uh, well, like, like I'm saying is that the fact that they had Jay Hager talk so much and he hasn't really said anything this entire time yeah. is just – like, I don't know why they would just – I think they should have built that slower, like have him say a couple words here and there and then go full out. He's in, obviously going to have to cut a promo sooner or later. I mean, um, he has to, and he has to build on what I his character I, really I is just, besides just being a muscle. Yeah, but I think they just could have kept him more quiet assassin type for a little bit longer and have him say like a couple words here, 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 and there. And yeah, but on. if you're going for the title and you have to look like someone that's menacing, yeah. I mean, you got to – I, well, I, I remember, think you have to do some promos. Remember that when uh, was it two weeks ago or la- was it two weeks ago when he attacked Moxley? Or was it last week? Uh, I think it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, right? So he attacks Moxley, and um, well, Moxley attacks him, and they start brawling, and we were we, we were kind of wondering why they would go with Jake Hager right now, being that Jericho yeah. has a rematch. Uh, he should have got a rematch, and then you know all that stuff like that. So it was kind of the second guy in command there, getting getting a title shot. And they, they actually talked about it. Jericho was in this video package talking about that, saying that he does have a, a rematch against uh, you know Moxley, Moxley. But keeping it in his back pocket and getting hate, letting Hager get a shot. So if Hager wins, you know he's gonna be happy for him, and um, it's basically gonna have to be two champions in the inner circle. And you know it's like they're basically playing up. He's basically playing up the fact that Inner Circle is united and whoever wins anything is – they're all the champions. Yeah. Unlike the elite who has a lot of, you know, dissension in between the ranks and a lot of – And those know, are the baby faces too. Squabbles. So it's, yeah. it, it, it has like the whole different dynamic in that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was basically Mox just, just, just putting him over. Yeah. Um, it's, it feels like it's just second class or everything else right now. It doesn't feel that, that important in this match. Yeah. And maybe it's because Hager, like you said, this is the first time we're actually hearing from him. Like in a in a meaningful way, besides just just being the muscle. I mean, he's only had two like two matches basically. Exactly, three, so, three matches. One was a six man tag, and yeah. So he so we just doesn't feel like there's much there yet. Uh, hopefully th- this week helped that, and then next week hopefully they'll, they'll they'll add to it, and then it'll just mean a bit more because it is the title. We want to make it the focal point of the company. Yeah, is the title. There's yeah. just a lot going on right now in the world, and it's just kind of like. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's, and it sucks for Mox. And it seems like right now the top feud right now is uh, Jericho and Matt Hardy. Yeah, because I mean like, it's it's got everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's, got, it's it's the more entertaining feud. Yeah, the uh, feud. You know, it doesn't have um, yeah, having no wrestling involved. It's just all entertainment at this yeah, point. Yeah, and so it seems it's just more... and like three weeks ago we were talking about the Inner Circle versus uh, the Elite in a uh, in the uh, no holes, in the uh, cage Blood match, guts, yeah, Blood and guts, guts match, and that was like that was the focal point basically, and and we were putting Mox to the side for a little bit, and yeah. that got screwed over, so that's to be pushed back to God knows when, and we're just kind of in like a like a holding pattern until this whole issues are are cleared yeah. up. So they're gonna have the um the match in two weeks. Um, you know, I hope it's a good match. I don't know, I you know, I don't know how they're they're gonna uh you know 
wrestle each other, like how it's going to the chemistry between the two. Uh, I'm not sure if they've had matches in WWE before. I think they did. I mean, I think, they, they definitely brought it up that, that they had matches. They, they, in, in well, the yeah, he, uh, Moxley did say that he knows him well. They rode around, you know, they've, they've, they've traveled together. They've been in the car for a while together. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of that going in there. So they, they play on the, on the backstory, and they will have this match. You know, but I do like the um, – the way they do their, their their video packages because they seem like more realistic and more sports yeah you know sports based like more like a uh, more like a UFC like yeah h- how they like, do their promos like, of like building it up yeah you like UFC and boxing and stuff like that like real fight uh, yeah, promos feel. and video packages they always feel like more realistic um, you know WWE obviously has the production and um, you know the way they splice their videos together the, the, like they're more epic um, yeah. in, in in form but these come off more of as like a realistic sports uh, thing. So, yeah, for sure but, you know it was it was good i really liked the video package really enjoyed it um and it's just playing up uh you know hager as a, as a legitimate threat which he obviously is um but he hasn't wrestled that much so you know they're playing him up he's really getting a title shot they're playing it up but they had sammy guevara in there and they had Trish jericho in there and they're all happy for hager and yep. want hager to win obviously for sure now if he's not gonna win um you never know. Like, they're not going to take this belt off of Moxley. They, yeah, they, call it the, they call it the Moxley era has begun. And he yeah, loses which it. Which is like, like a know, month later. Less defense. than a month. Yeah, yeah, so I don't think it's going to happen. But, you know, uh, hopefully Hager puts up a good show and it's a good yeah. match. Um, should be pretty wild with being no, no holds barred and Moxley being in it. So. And he's got a hell of a bathroom, man. Jesus. Yeah, hell of a bathroom. All right, guys. So the next thing on the show is takeaway number two. Uh, back to back here with the takeaways because it is Lance Archer's debut. In a W was first match, anyways. He's debuted, but he makes you know his in ring debut. Um, the Murder Hawk Monster. Now Murder I like the Murder Hawk. Hawk name, but the fact that they put Monster afterwards, it's, it seems kind of like well, the, a lot to well, say. Yeah, but it's like the Murder Hawk Lance Archer or the Murder Hawk Monster. I mean, I guess it. it yeah, it, it, uh, to me, it's the Murder Hawk Lance Archer sounds a little bit better. Yeah. But the Murder Hawk Monster is what they're calling him now. They cut a promo. They had a video beforehand. Uh, Jake. Before the match, it was Jake cutting a, a top-notch promo as per usual. Um, so good. But this was actually a little bit better because we our our issue with this story, our gripe, is, yeah, our gripe with the story before is because it seems like it's it's Jake the Snake debut like wrestling, not Jake, uh, not Lance yeah. Archer, right? So it seems like it's more about Jake. He's cutting the 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 promos, obviously, but it seems to be more about him and between him and Cody, not like Lance, Lance Archer seemed, seemed to be an afterthought. Um, and he's the one that's actually going to wrestle. But this one, it was Jake hyping up Lance Archer and they were showing Lance Archer a little bit more. Yeah. And it was just basically him talking about Lance Archer, which is what it should have been from the beginning. Doing the Paul Heyman thing where he's hyping up his guy, his guy and yeah. it's, it's, it's making his guy feel special and not to, and still cutting great promos, but making it all about his guy and his not guy, just not. about how much of a badass Jake Jacob take Roberts is at doing promos. Which exactly. that, that's the way it yeah. felt. Jake was a star and he just was like he just a guy being thrown in there because Jake is 60 years old, 70 years old and, you know, recovering drug addict. Okay, yeah. That's kind of what it felt like, really. Yeah. No, big time because that, that, that's that's what it's that's what it's been like. It's been like, like I said, it's been it, feel, it felt like it was Cody and Jake storyline, and Lance Archer was just an afterthought. But now, with not saying that now it's all fixed, but no. this was a step in the right direction where it yes. makes Lance Archer seem more viable, and 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 Jake is there doing what he's supposed to do is hype yeah. Lance Archer up. So it's Lance Archer versus Marco Stunt, which I thought was <laughs> odd choice. I mean, it was like, a squash match that make him look strong, and it's like and he's strong, six foot six against is, five foot two. Who, who isn't gonna look strong against Marco Stunt? So Everybody I think looks strong. Even, yeah. even some of the women look strong. So they should have had. I mean, we him. will look good against so, Marcos. Okay, so they have the AW. Um, I'm sorry, the TNT Championship Tournament, right? So I guess yeah. they're gonna do a TNT t- TV title belt type of thing, a second secondary the belt. T- there's no TV title, it's just TNT title. Yeah, so <laughs> it's gonna be a tournament, and one in one of the one of the brackets, it's uh, you know, it's four matches, uh, and then it, one of the matches is Lance Archer versus Cole Cabana. Uh, Skull Cabana did the commentary on his match, yeah. and um, he was really playing like the good guy role, like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna be. He's not gonna toss me around like that. So and so this, so and so that. Which is fine. Right? Which is good. Just like like old school baby face, where that's where Cole which I, is. Which I think he's gonna beat Cole Cabana's ass. I don't well, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Cole's think he's gonna. Be, gonna... I don't think he's gonna be super competitive because you're hyping this guy up to go against Cody. To, to be the monster. Yeah. Like so to be the monster. So I don't think it's gonna be super super like close match. But okay, back to the match. So it's. Lance Archer versus Marco Stunt. I think they should have picked a different guy, maybe a, a not a massive guy, but a bigger sized guy for him. Or to just have like through. like a local jobber. Um. 
logo yeah, and enhance, enhancement talent. Because like, basically like, you have him against stunt just to, for the visual of you him tossing yeah. around and manhandling which, him. Which was fun though. I liked it. Like he literally yeah, cool. came in. Yeah. I mean, first of all, he came in like a like a wild man, crazy red outfit they had on, walking in like looking at the at the guys the wrestler came in as he's walking in the ring the bell hasn't even rung he's he's going to the corner he just closed lines marco stunt which i which which cracked me up yeah i, I was laughing my, my wife was like what the, what the hell are you laughing about yeah. like, she was just, <laughs> just walking the ring and just knocked him out <laughs> before yeah. the match even started so it was just like it was good i mean i thought that it was fun i thought it because i wasn't where where they had the whole like farm ring weird orgy thing yeah, they were doing was... like f- f- the, the fight club crap that sucked that wasn't anything because he, this, there's this nobody because there's everybody in that ring you didn't know who they were so yeah, it was just like a bunch just, of random guys just, that just yeah you found a couple construction workers and like yeah. and, um, just like like around. like the the visual of him tossing this guy around is cool and all that's that's that's, that's, that's entertaining and obviously you know anybody looks like a monster gets Marco stunt so I think they should just pick a, a different guy. Um, you could have picked. I mean, there's so many guys you could have cho- choose from. Have him. I, w- I would like to have seen him destroy Joey Janela or some shit like that, right? Like, okay, uh, yeah. like a like a more like prominent guy but that's also, in the ring a little bit more. We don't know if they could have some of these guys fly in. You know, it's that's like, true. Like that's true. This this could just be like, hey, we need somebody to beat up, and it's like we can't. We call this four guys, but they're unavailable. And yeah. Marco and and and, and the bumps that Marco Stunt takes looks like they, they it looks like yeah. they kill him so i mean machine. it was i don't want to like nitpick it too much but it, it, it was a cool visual he's he's this era spike dully that's what we're gonna yeah call yeah him. so yeah it's a pretty much a good uh uh comparison but uh it's fine the way they did it um i kind of wish they would have picked somebody different just to make him look yep. more of a monster rather than him like he's obviously he looks he's just looking at the size you know the size difference is crazy so he beats the shit out of marco stunt destroys him completely and then beats him uh which I do like his finisher. It's kind of like a, like a razor's edge, but he flips it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drops him on, on face first. Yeah. Um, and then he ended up winning the match, leaving the ring, coming back, and then choke slamming Marco Stunt <laughs> from the apron on top of Billy like, Gunn. Threw him like a bag of yeah, shit. Yeah, and Orange Cassidy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. threw him bad. He just tossed his ass And then like bad, I think yeah. Orange Cassidy, like when they were on the floor, I saw him like smiling. I was like, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was so, just ridiculous. So, I mean, as a fine debut for the Murder Hawk monster Lance Archer, um, I don't, you know, I don't think he's ready for Cody uh, unless like him and Cody meet in the finals of the TNT tournament. Um, I'm not sure. Well, well, that would be kind of like kind of fluky too, because like, they're already in a feud and they're just going to end up in the tournament. But I mean, out of all the guys in that tournament, Cody's probably the guy that, that, that needs to win the belt. Uh, either him or Darby. And I don't think even Darby Allen like, fits the Darby. TNT championship tournament. No, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like something he'd like, he'd win. Like I don't yeah. say anything. Like he just seems like he's too much of a, like that loner look where he just yeah, like, does like, he, like, what's he, is he there for the belt? He's just there just to whip people's ass and Yeah, basically. Shit. So I don't, I don't think he, he feels I don't, like. but now, you know, this is going a little, jumping ahead a little bit. Yeah, but at the end, we don't want to get too much into it because we got to talk about that next week. Yeah, yeah, and, but the end of the thoughts. main event, um, <clears throat> uh, Tony Schiavone let it slip. I'm not sure if he messed up because it will be, I mean, Darby, he fucked up a couple times. It will be Darby that, Allen and, uh, versus, uh, Sammy G. Sammy G in the first round, right? For yeah. his bracket. And it will be Sean Spears versus Cody. Yeah. Um, he did let it slip that Sean Spears and Darby Allen will face each other in the tournament. I'm not sure if he messed it up. He well, got confused, no, or he's yeah, well, or he, he let kept, it slip that the well, second round. He, he kept thinking uh, Sammy Guevara was Darby Allen. Like, he said like three or four times, calling Sammy G Darby Allen. Like he okay. was kind of lost. I mean, we love Tony. Tony's the greatest announcer in the history of, of our great sport. But yeah. just still, he was fucking up a lot. He's probably those stupid shoes. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he was also messing up a lot. So it could it, it could have been it could have been, been a mess that. up. Yeah. yeah so I think it's more let's of a mess see. I mean, the most like the one that makes the most sense is to have Archer and Cody go head to head at the the finals of the tournament for that TNT championship. Um, you know, and it, it basically, it's not like it's different because it's not like him coming in Archer and then getting an immediate shot at Cody. Cause I don't yeah. think he deserves it. Like it doesn't make any no, sense. No, no. So it's better if it just happens to be that way. They're in the tournament together and they meet in the yeah. final. And that's where you get the match out of the way. I mean, I guess you could do that. It's just, it's all a weird time for everything right now. It just, it just, it just sucks that we're in this, this situation that we are in for yeah. so, everything in life. So that, that, that was taken by number two guys. The next thing on the segment was, um, well, before this was uh, another Dark Order uh, vignette, which uh, 
they have Brody Lee in it, obviously the exalted one. He's don't you fucking sh- yawn in front of Brody Lee. <laughs> don't you yawn yeah. or sneeze. Now he he's doing this again. Last week it was the the steak thing with the sneezing and mm-hmm. kicking guys out. If you ate if you ate before he finished eating and if you sneeze while he was eating, that's another thing. He Which I think are all you know pretty realistic issues that you, you yeah. have and real I think things. It's, yeah, I, I think it's all relatable. Yeah, I, th- I think we all have all those issues. With people. So in this one, he's in a boardroom or like conference room, and he has a bunch of Dark Order guys there with like staticky TV behind them. Which yeah, with a random static TV. <laughs> I don't know why it's on at that point. Well, it's no. just static. Okay. He's there with a suit and he's talking, um, you know, to all of them. And he basically uh, tells one of them to stand up and says, him, you know, tell him what I told you to say. Yeah. And he says it. Well, first off, he says, okay, what do you say, Mr. Lee? Or uh, uh, no, yeah. Uh, he, he said, he, no, he, uh, he said, he's also one. Yeah. He said, no, it's Mr. Mr. Brody. Yeah. Mr. Brody. Like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Lee. He's like, no, it's Mr. Brody. So yelling at him like that. Right. And then when he's, repeats what he wanted him to say. He says he said it wrong and kicks him out. And yeah. then he sees the next guy next to him yawn and he gets into his face and saying, everything is closed. Why do you have any excuse to be tired and stuff like that, whatever. Um, and, you know, yells at him and then has him leave. So I think this is all plays on like Vince McMahon, basically. Um, cause basically, because the- we, we all know that he has like uncontrollable b- body functions. Like that's his thing where where, yeah. tri- where uh, Vince just hates that stuff. So yeah, he's yawning, he's play. sneezing. You know, never get yeah. sick if you're sick. Which is you know, cool. Like, yeah. So I, I don't know if they're poking fun at it, but they, they, they seem it seems like they are. So, but this leads into the next match because it's um, the Dark Order minions number eight and nine. Eight and nine. Eight Don't nine, forget eight right? and nine. Eight my, and nine. I think my two favorite of the Dark Order groups. Uh, yeah, eight so they're nine. just guy, random guys. Who knows who they are with masks on? So it's just a guy that was like... I don't know. It, it could have been. So it's, two, it's them two. <laughs> or, or, or is that seven? I, I think that's I seven. Know. So it's eight and nine, right? Going against the debuting team of the Natural Nightmares, the team of... Which I, Q- I like the name. Yeah, QT Marshall and the Natural Dustin Rhodes. Obviously, with Brandy Rhodes, is kind of like their, ma- their manager kind of yeah. type of thing. So it's all the Nightmare family, right? It's all yep. Cody in this group. It's all them. So now they have a tag team. QT Marshall's on, the sc- uh, you know, on TV a little bit more. And now he's in the tag team, which is a, a good thing for Dustin to do right now because he did lose that feud quickly against Jake Hager. Yep. And um, since there are no blood and guts around uh, as of right now, this is what they're going to do um, and put them in a tag team together, which is cool. Um, it was like a, you know, a, a pretty much a squash match. Um, yeah, it was, it's just it them was, dominating the shit out of the eight, number eight and nine. Um, um, so which I don't think fine. it was there. I, to, I, I did like them as a tag team together, though. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think I think Marshall it's uh, like they, what they were trying to do was was make them look strong. Uh, the nightmare, um, the natural nightmares. Yeah, the, the, the natural nightmares, and then have Brody come out like yeah. he did, and just like you know, if you fail him, you're gonna get you're you're yeah. gonna pay for okay. it. So, so that's basically, basically what they were trying to yeah, do. Yeah, the natural nightmares dominate the match. Did a lot of did a lot of you know uh, nice tag team moves and and working together and 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 really um, it felt like an old school uh, kind of squash match that you would have yeah. an established tag team squash somebody else on like you know uh, NWA World Championship Wrestling. Um, so then the match is over. Na- natural Nightmares win. Here comes Brody Lee out. Seems like he's going to confront the Natural Nightmares, but he doesn't. He walks right past. He looks at them, walks right past them, and then power bombs the shit out of the, out of the, the guy who got pinned. Now, it was either eight or nine who got pinned. We don't I'm gonna know. Say it was, I'm going to say it was nine. I, th- I think nine really fucked it up. So nine. Match, so, okay, so let's say it's nine, and he got the shit power bombed him, and then he gave a dirty-ass look to the other one. To eight. To eight. And, and, then walked, look and then walked out the rings. Pretty much, if you fail him, he will whip your ass. So, yeah, which I like. I mean, that's the way every boss should be. Like, just don't yeah. fuck up, you know? So, it was a cool segment and um, and all that. Um, what do you call it? Okay, so the next thing, uh, which takeaway number three, is going to be a funny, funny video package, video live, supposedly live, of Chris Jericho. Of course it was live. It was and, at his pala- palatial, palatial estate, estate inside <laughs> of his pool or his hot tub. Hot tub guy. Hot tub. He's there and, you know, he's talking about Matt Hardy. Well, a little and, bit of the bubbly. Yeah. Why he's drink- well, it's funny because he pours himself a glass of champagne <laughs> um, and then he pours the glass but then still drinks out of the bottle anyway, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. So he's, he's there, talking, on. He he's there talking about Matt Hardy and all that. And then, um, you know, and about the inner circle. And then here comes Vanguard 1. No, Vanguard 2.0, bro. 2.0. You didn't see the thing. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Vanguard 2.0 trespassing on his on Jer- Jericho's uh, property. Shows up there. Jericho gets Hell, out of the property as well. Yeah. Yeah, lake behind them. He gets out of the hot tub and confronts Vanguard 1, basically saying that, you know, he, he, he you know, that he was, he couldn't say sorry, but that he was sorry about, la- you know, last, the last time, last week, and all the stuff he said to him, and then gave him, like, a really tiny baby uh, inner, circle inner circle t-shirt, t-shirt and then hung it out with a hanger on top of it. <laughs> you know? But, like, and then he was kind of like, um, you know, let, let, you know, join the inner circle, but then Vanguard one kind of flies away, 
And he's like, he dips. Yeah, he dips. He's like, come back here. And then he says, release the hounds. Which, <laughs> and it's just a bunch of random dogs, like regular. Like, are those all Jer- the Jericho family dogs? Like it 10 dogs. Be. Yeah, they have like a lot. Dogs. Yeah, a lot that, of that, random that, ones, that, tiny ones that, and small ones. That, that was one of the funnier little yeah. stupid videos I've ever seen. Yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. That was it was just like, release the hounds. You think it's going to be like some, like, some bigger dogs? Give me back my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just the, it's the most random assortment of dogs that come out. Yeah, it's like you just pick everyone. He it's literally like, picked all the dogs from the block. And he was like, yeah, let me borrow your dogs real quick. And then <laughs> just had them out there and do all that. But that, that, that was pretty funny. Um, and then, you know, Vanguard one, you know, leaves and takes the T-shirt with him. Um, so that's real funny. The, the, you know, it's, 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 it's dumb, but it's entertaining. Yeah, it's, it's a fun, stupid, like, you yeah. know, like childish humor almost, um, like, immature. But it's fun. Like, that, but like that stuff makes yeah. – cracks me up like Yo, I, and I, I and it's, it's just the stuff he says like he said like he called um uh he called matt hardy instead of damascus he called him damas damascus <laughs> yeah and then he called uh uh cody the type the tiger king yeah. uh cody exotic which is funny um <laughs> you know a couple you know and it's just a, uh he called uh Kenny Omega, a pumpkin head dipshit, um, <laughs> stuff like that. So he's making fun of all the, you know, all, all the elite members, um, talking about how the inner circle doesn't drink on the job and all that stuff like that. Uh, but it was Man, a real fun, I'm, real fun. I segment. miss cowboy shit. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, he's been gone for a while. So it's 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 real funny uh, segment, real funny video. Uh, the release the house thing is the funniest part about it. And uh, you know, uh, Chris Jericho just continues to entertain. And the thing with Matt Hardy is, is, is it's really good stuff. Now, I don't know if Matt Hardy's going to show up on TV because of this whole thing going on. I don't know if he's leaving the house or what whatnot. He has small children, so let's see what he does. Um, obviously, Chris Jericho lives in Tampa or somewhere yeah. in that area, so he's close. You can drive over and get there. So, But, you know, we want to see more. Every, like kind of, It's kind of like you're waiting to see what's going to happen next week, what other kind of video things they're going to do next week between the two of them. Um, a lot of fun stuff there. So that's takeaway number three, guys, of the night. Uh, next thing on the show was the main event, Cody, Darby Allen versus Sammy G and Sean Spears. Now, these are all guys that are going to be facing, you know, each other in the tournament. Other, yeah, in the tournament. Which is a very WWE thing to do. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Have all these guys and just put them in tag teams together. Yeah, yeah. it's such a WWE now, thing. Now, Sean Spears, he came dead, in dead, and dead. immediately his first day there, he hits Cody in the head with a chair. Unprotected chair shot to the head, busts Rip. him open. Everyone started crying, and about it. it just kind of fell off after that. Like well, he hasn't really had much done anything. He, well, and he's it, got it, what, Tully, and his record. Yeah, he's got Tully with him. That really didn't help yeah. him because his record in twenty twenty is one and six. Yeah, and now he's just like his biggest thing now is just like he needs a tag team partner. Like he's yeah, searching so, for a tag team partner. I don't know what happened with him there, and then it just kind of fell off, and he's really not yeah. doing much of anything important. Um, I mean, he's, I guess at least he's got kind of lost in the shuffle. There's also a lot of like he's a factions, already established yeah. star. It's a faction. He doesn't have a faction. Yeah, because all factions and, right now in AEW. And they're and they're trying to like get these guys that that were just famous on the indies and try to make them stars on TV. Sean Spears has been on TV for a long time. Yeah, we, we know he he has name value going in there. So I just think he got lost in the shuffle. Doesn't mean he's not gonna you know jump up here, but yeah, he definitely feels out of it. If there's anybody that could probably use that that TNT title and like. Be like Sean, Spears, acid, like that, Sean yeah. Spears, or even just to get to the final. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he seems like lost after after starting. So after his first day there, being such an like, oh my god, he just cracked Cody over the head yeah. like that. And like it was and, like controversial. Everybody was yeah, like, the CT stuff. He thought, like, he, like, he really thought that? there was gonna be like he was gonna be like a major player there. It was there, a but, gimmick yeah. chair, but he hasn't done much of anything. No. Um, so this is the match. Um, you know, an exciting, really good match. Um, the coffin drop that uh, – well, first off, Darby Allen scales that pole that, we, that we've been referencing, yeah. that we referenced before. He just climbs it. There's a coffin drop on top of Sammy G and Sean yeah. Spears, which was pretty crazy. Um, that but then nuts. Sean Spears grabs a chair and looks like he's going to hit Cody with it, obviously playing back to when he first arrived. And uh, Darby Allen saves Cody, but then he gets pinned tr- after doing that. So he got kind of rolled up and then, then got pinned um, by Sean Spears. So he's kind of frustrated at the end of the match obviously and cody tries to console him like yo it's okay man he made a mistake yeah. whatever uh it happens and then alan's not having it and Darby clocks cody it. and drops him down and that, that's the end of the show so you know and this is the part where Tony shivani said you know spears and alan would square off in the next round that's what he said so that was, like, uh, yeah so i, like, I, I don't, see, I, I I don't know if, he's, if he made a mistake or if, if he if it let it slip or what but um oh taz gonna keep, take his job yeah so <laughs> i'm not <laughs> sure what's that up with that but that was the end of the show guys it was a really entertaining show and you know a little bit of tension between darby allen and cody rhodes so let's see where that goes 
Um, I assume it will be – I assume there will be second-round Cody versus – because the way brackets work, it's uh, on the left side, it's Sean Spears and Cody. On the bot underneath them is Darby Allen and Sammy G. So the winners of those two will face each other. On the other yeah. side, it's Lance Archer and, and Cole Cabana. And the other one is Kip Sabian and Dustin Rhodes. So those whoever wins that will face each other and, and go to the final after that. Um, I'm excited so for the tournament. I'm excited for the tournament. I'm excited for the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I like tournaments. To They're cool. It's, it's a small especially tournament. for it's a belt. It's small. Yeah, it's small like that's the thing. Like if it's like a 32 round, you know, round robin crap. It's like it's a, that's a, it's just a lot. But yeah. like nice small tournaments for the belt. It's like for you something can, special. You can literally spread this out four weeks. Like yeah, have the left thing. side do their matches next week, the right side do their matches week after that, yeah. semifinals, and then the final like that. After I that. like it, and yeah. and like and you can have some stud matches and still get guys over even that they don't win the match. So just yeah. more creation to build more stars. Yeah. So um, overall, really good show. Excited for next week's show. Um, now when we get to the shit that sucked. This is oh, you remember? I remember you this one. Remember. Now, this is like. I, to be honest with you, I don't really have anything like on like, the top of listen, my head. The shit that sucks is I haven't seen cowboy shit. There's been no beer drinking. There's been no fun with that stuff. Uh, it's just like the shit that sucks is COVID nineteen. That's what sucks. It's it's ruining the events a little bit. It's they, they're they're doing the best they can with what they can do. Yeah, and so that's it, the shit that sucks. The shit that sucks is the fact that this guy's missing from the show that you can't. Yeah, see. that you, you haven't seen see. Kenny and Hangman together. You know, since like they, since it's their tag team match, basically the paper grab. I think yeah. they showed up one one day after, maybe like the next week or something. It was separate because Kenny had a broken hand or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, like it's like, so um, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> one thing that was kind of dumb on the show, which we didn't reference or go over, was uh, the fact that it was the Young Bucks, and you know, it was mm. Matt meeting up with Nick, and he was gonna train, like, get him back in ring shape. See if he was in yeah, ring shape. Yeah. And they had this. They found this random basketball court, and they had a random ring there, and they started training there. <laughs> it was kind of I mean, dumb and funny. It was kind of funny because it was kind of like stupid but um i like of course it's your brother of course you're gonna try <laughs> like yeah like, like, no shit no shit yeah. to work it out <laughs> yeah they're a tag team partner so yeah guys that's the shit that sucked um you know tough to find stuff in AEW nowadays to find the yeah. shit that sucked. It, it's it's so good even when they're just you know putting anything together really because yeah. that's all they can do it's still good it, it really is but uh guys that's the video for today thank you guys for watching again hit that like subscribe button all that good stuff uh follow me on social media um Make sure you check out my videos, uh, my Call of Duty videos that I posted up and stuff like that. And my other, uh, the other takeaways on there. Um, hit us, you know, hit me up on, on Twitter and Instagram. Links in the description below. What you guys thought about AEW and all stuff like that. And when do you think Blood and Guts will happen? Will they wait until the Newark show, which is postponed until June or something like that? Um, I mean, if the that way, happens. I mean, we're in an area like this is the area we live in and we're one of the top you know, uh, cases in the, in the world. So, yeah, I don't know. so we don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see what happens. But guys, that's the end of the video. Remember, if it doesn't work for you, do not do that job. Later, Marks. Boom.